The only good thing about making mistakes is the opportunity to learn. I did some learning this week. A lot of learning. I tried some watercolor and I tried painting a technique that I saw online. Only problem is I kept forgetting what I was doing and I went back and forth and... This video is basically about how to try and salvage a painting that you've overpainted. So here's the painting. This is what I was able to make out of it, but it looks more like a gouache painting than a watercolor painting. So through this video, I'll tell you some of the mistakes I made and things that you shouldn't do when doing watercolor. Watercolor mistakes to avoid. Here is the photo that I'm using for the reference for my watercolor. I like it because there's a lot of bright sunlight on the front of them and you can get some nice highlights. I'm thinking the background is going to be more abstract, but picking up on some of the warm tones and the cool tones behind them. But what I like most about this photo is that it tells a story. Hold on. I think you need to know that I'm trying out some new paint that I haven't used before and two new brushes. The main one being larger than any brush I've used before. So right off I think I do too much with the wash. I want to keep the warm colors in the background and the cool colors on the cool side, but I'm separating them too much and then I'm not actually putting enough pigment in. And I should have carried some of the warm tones in a wash right into the figures instead of trying to paint around them. And that way I would have the warmth underneath the skin tones to bring out in the picture. So I'm trying to do too many things with the wash in the background, and I'm not sure how these new pigments are going to play on the paper. That leads me to my next mistake. Instead of waiting for the background to dry, I try to go in with more wet wash and connect it and make the colors more vibrant. I end up making the colors too dark for the initial wash and I'm fighting against paint that's already drying on the paper. All this on top of the fact that I haven't figured out the balance of how much water this new brush holds when I'm mixing the water in with the pigments. Is it coming out too watery or is it coming out with too much pigment? At this point I figure I can fix the background later. So I start painting the figures. Now this is where that new technique comes in, where you start painting in the deeper shadows first. It's the opposite of how I normally work, but I'm going to give it a try. So I'm painting in the shadows, but I'm trying to leave an open space to do a slightly lighter tone and also leave some white of the paper for highlights. I'm getting too much water on the brush and it's causing me to lose the white of the page. By adding too much water, it's making it really difficult to leave the pigment in the areas where I would like it to stay. The table's only on a slight angle, but I keep ending up with puddles down at the bottom that I have to move up, and that causes me to overwork the paint. I'm not bothered by the fact that things are not working out in this painting. This is just my way of playing with new material and experimenting. So. Anything I do is a win because I'm going to be learning from it. For me, it's more fun and more informative than just doing swatches. Now if you look at her arm here, this is a perfect example of overworked paint where you add water to stuff that's already dried and you're going to end up with what they call that cauliflower look. You get a weird dried puddle in the middle of a shadow. There's a weird freedom when you know that something isn't working out and you're like, what have I got to lose? So I can just have fun and try new things and see what works and what doesn't work. Here I'm testing out the purple and adding this new blue to it and I'm liking the way the two of them are working together. Then I mix some of the reds and I'm not as happy. They're coming out too dark, there's too much pigment. Okay, and here's another mistake. I came back with another color and tried to blend it in with the red, and it ends up just making the color a little bit muddy and not as vibrant. The easy fix for this is to just wait for the red to dry and then come back with the colors that you want to add in for the shadows. A little bit of this sense of 
freedom and not worrying is great, but sometimes it just makes you rush things when you know you should wait. Now the t-shirt in the photo is white and I wanted to do it more of a soft gray, but as I did it I really didn't like the color. So I thought well, I'll add in some shadows and add in another color, but I didn't like that either. So I just blended the two colors together. Because I want his t-shirt to be lighter, I decide to just add white paint on top of it and make it look more opaque. So here is where it starts to look more like gouache. It gets lighter when it dries, so I will come back with the white and add some highlights later on. I was still having some difficulty gauging the amount of water to add to the paint. Now whether it's because I've been using pan paints for a while and all of a sudden these new paints are tube paints and they weren't completely dry, so I don't know if that made a difference. This is the point where I just went, I want to have some fun, I'm going to add some detail, I'm going to use some opaque colors. I deepen the shadows here and then I continue adding some opaque details. Using a rigger brush and white paint, I add in some highlights. This is an attempt to compensate for the fact that I lost the white of the page as highlights. It of course works, but it works in the way that an acrylic or a gouache works, as opposed to the beauty of a translucent watercolor. Okay, let's speed things up here. Now I'm going to make the background darker so that the figures actually move to the front. So I will mute the colors a little bit and add a lot of deeper tones. Thank you for joining me while I experimented with this new paint and new brushes and a new technique. And whether it was successful or not, I hope you picked up some pointers on things not to do when doing a watercolor, as well as maybe some tips on how to save something that isn't going right. Thanks for watching. You can support my channel by subscribing so YouTube will share my videos with more people. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you ring that bell, you'll be notified every time I post a video.